This is another question and answer video. The question is about, does God love saved sinners? Does God love a Christian who gets away from God, gets backslid, gets into a lifestyle of sin and lives just like they lived before they were saved or and they're in a situation where you can't tell the difference between them and a saved person or between them and a lost person? The question has to do with the fact that since Psalm chapter 5 and verse 5 says, The Lord hatest all workers of iniquity. So would he still love a Christian who is living in iniquity or living in sin? I believe the answer is yes. You see, God still loves a Christian who's living for the flesh. Number one, because nothing can separate us from the love of God. If you want to see a great verse for this, then look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. And I'll show you that no matter what happens, nothing can separate you from the love of God. In Romans 8, 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor any other, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That pretty much covers everything. It says, nor things present, your present sins, nor things to come, the sins you haven't even committed yet. None of that stuff can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Anything you can imagine or come up with that would put someone in danger of losing their salvation is covered in this verse. And none of that can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not, And this is not just any love, but specifically the love that is in Christ Jesus. Look at the verse. It says, the, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is a love that even a lost sinner doesn't have. You see, God so loved the world, he loved everyone enough to die for them. Uh, every sinner you see, God loved them enough to die for them. But not everyone has the love that is in Christ Jesus. That's what you have if you're saved. And nothing can separate you from that love. Even if you lived a life of sin and got off into all the sins you did before you were saved and you look just like a lost person, God doesn't hate you. The next thing, if God were to start hating you, then number two, he would have to hate himself. In 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. You see, even if you quit believing... If there was a moment when you believed on Jesus Christ from the heart to salvation, if there was a time when that took place, then you're saved and you're still saved even if you quit believing tomorrow. Let's say you got busted upside the head by somebody and you just lost your memory. You started thinking like a lost person and thinking you was an atheist. You're still saved. Let's say some big tragedy came into your life and you got in a situation like Job where all your kids died, your house burnt down, your animals were stolen, and your best friend just sued you and everything else. You're still saved, even if you start denying Jesus Christ. If there was a time when you believe from the heart to salvation, you're saved. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't go back and reverse the second birth. Just like you can't. There's times where somebody says, well, I wish I was never born. But that's too bad. You can't go back and reverse the first birth. You can't go back and reverse the second birth. But um, he can't deny himself. If God were to start hating you, he would have to hate himself. To explain this further, in Ephesians 5.30, it says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So you are in Christ, and Christ is in you. You are part of his body. If he hates you, then he would be hating himself because you're in him. You're me a member of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He'd be hating his own body, his own flesh, his own, his own bones. And Jesus Christ is our example, right? He's the example of a perfect husband for his bride. If you want to be a good husband, then you look at how Jesus Christ treats his bride, and you start treating your bride that way. 
Now, if the Lord was to start hating you, that means it's okay for us to start hating our wife, right? You see, we're, we are the bride of Christ. We're part of his body. We're members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. And it, it says in Ephesians 5, 28 and 29, so ought, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated, hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. Notice that, even as the Lord the church. You see, if God, if the Lord Jesus was to start hating you, he would be hating himself. He'd be hating his bride. But he doesn't hate his own flesh. He doesn't hate his bride, who's his own flesh and, and bone. It would be like the Lord hating his own bride if he were to start hating you because of the sins that you've done. And then the next thing, number three, you have to consider your standing versus your state. You see, your standing is in Christ. When God sees your standing, if you're saved, your standing is in Christ, and in Christ he sees you as holy, without blemish, without sin, washed in the blood, and so on and so forth, just as perfect as the Lord Jesus. Nothing can change your standing in Christ. It never changes. You, your sin cannot affect it. But your state is different. That was your standing, but your state is different. Your state is how you're living at any given moment. Unlike your standing, your state changes. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Even when you're living in a righteous state, it is never as righteous as your standing. Because nothing can ever be, nothing you do can ever be as righteous as the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what your standing is. It's the, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So your state, even though when you're living righteous, it's never going to be able to be as good as your standing. But the goal should be to try and make your state match your standing as much as you possibly can. But remember that Psalm 39 and verse 5 says, Man at his best state is altogether vanity. So when it comes to your salvation, the Lord's not looking at your state. You know, the state changes. It, it changes at any given moment. You could be living good today, living bad tomorrow. It changes. God's not looking at that when it comes to your salvation. He's looking at your standing. Your standing never changes. It's as perfect as the Lord Jesus Christ is. And if your standing is in Christ, then it will never change. And if you're in Christ, then nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The next thing, number four, your spiritual circumcision. God can't stop hating you because of the... God cannot start hating you because you've got the spiritual circumcision. When you got saved, the Lord cut your soul loose from your flesh. Your flesh didn't get born again. Your spirit isn't what was born again. Your, it wasn't your flesh. It wasn't your spirit. It was your soul. That is, that's why it says to cleanse yourself from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Your soul is already clean. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it says, Having therefore promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. See, we read the Bible, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? And uh, God sanctifies and cleanses us with the washing of water by the word. When we, when we read the word, it cleanses our flesh and spirit. But... You, your soul is already cleansed if you're saved. When you sin, it isn't on the soul. It doesn't get applied to the soul because of the spiritual circumcision that cuts your soul loose from your flesh. The sin's on your flesh. It doesn't contaminate the soul anymore because you're cut loose from it. So when you sin, it isn't the soul. It's the flesh. And Paul said in Romans seven twenty, Now if I do that, I would not. It's no more I that do it. It's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You see, as far as God is concerned, when it comes to your salvation and your standing in Christ and the love that you have in Christ, when it comes to those things, it isn't, God doesn't see it as you doing the sinning. It's the flesh. And Paul said, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And this is how you explain 1 John 3, 9, where it says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. You see, this verse has caused many people to think that, you know, if they sin, 
God hates them and they lose their salvation or that they were never really saved to begin with because they still sin. Because it said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. So a holiness person might say, well, you're still sinning, so you're not born of God or you're not born of God anymore. But remember that it's that it isn't your soul, the new creature that's committing sin. Your soul doesn't sin. Uh, it's it's the flesh. Your flesh isn't born of God. It is the new man in you that's born of God that doesn't commit sin. It's the flesh that's committing the sin. Your flesh isn't born of God. So that's why it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. And when it comes to the, the new you, the new creature that you got when you got saved, it doesn't commit sin. It's your flesh. And if people could realize that you've got a standing that's perfect, you got a state that changes, you got the new man that never sins, and you got the old man that wants to sin and gives you a fit every day. And you got to just keep, the, I mean, the, the old man's dead. So if you sin, you're just letting a dead man run your life. You're not killing the flesh. The flesh, doctrinally speaking, when you got saved, your flesh died. So you're not killing the flesh. You're just having to beat it, beat it down, beat it back in the grave. You know, show it who's a boss, put it back in the grave because it just wants to rule your life. You don't want the flesh to rule your life. You want the new man to rule your life and it wants to do what God wants you to do. But there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God for many reasons. Um, but I hope this has helped some people who may be doubting their salvation or in the person that asked this who is worried maybe, well, God hates them uh, for getting off into sin and things like that. God does not hate any born-again believer. 